This is Pre-Calculus 12, Chapter 6.1. We're going to be learning trigonometric ratios in standard position. So let's recall SOHCAHTOA. We have opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. And we have a right triangle. And we have theta. So what we're trying to solve is, suppose we have a Ferris wheel. Can we determine the position of a rider at any angle? Can we determine how many times the rider has gone around based on this angle? And the answer is yes. And just so that everyone has the same viewpoint, let's have some conventions. We put the origin at the center of the Ferris wheel. So it looks like this. So angles in standard position start with the initial side. This is the initial side. And that's along the positive x-axis. It rotates counterclockwise until the terminal side. is reached. And this is our terminal side. And this is the positive direction. If we were going clockwise, that would be the negative direction. We can freely rotate multiple times clockwise or counterclockwise to reach the terminal side. And there should be an M here. Every time we go all the way around the circle, Counterclockwise, we add 360 degrees to the angle. So this would be once around the Ferris wheel. And every time we go all the way around the circle clockwise, we subtract 360 degrees from the angle. So this would be once around the Ferris wheel in the opposite direction. Anytime two angles have the same terminal side, we say they are coterminal. So, for example, 30 degrees and 390 degrees are coterminal. If we add 360 to 30, we get 390. Every angle has an infinite number of coterminal sides. And we can write this as an expression, 30 degrees plus 360 degrees times n, n element z. This is the set of integers. I think in grade nine, you learned to use i, but in math, we use z. And find two more coterminal angles of 30. So we can just do 30 degrees minus 360 degrees. That's negative 330 degrees. We can do 30 degrees plus 720 degrees. And that would be 750 degrees. Here's the definition, the principal angle. That's the smallest positive coterminal angle. So when we're using degrees, it's Zero degrees, inclusive, 
and up to 360 degrees, but not inclusive. So when we're thinking of angles in standard position, we want to think of an equation on the unit circle. x squared plus y squared equals 1. So we are doing Pythagoras with hypotenuse equal to 1. And we can think of that as the radius on the unit circle. This symbol here is called theta. It's a Greek letter. So for instance, sine 30 equals 1 half. Cos 30 equals root 3 over 2. Tan 30 equals 1 over root 3. And for trig, we have a lot of radicals in the denominator, and we don't normally rationalize the denominator. Now, if we generalize to any circle with radius r, we have sine theta equals y over r, cos theta equals x over r, and tan theta equals y over x. And this gives us the mnemonic Sir Kixer Ticks. So rather than saying Sokotoa, we say Sir Kixer Ticks. And how does this help us find the position of the rider? Well, on the unit circle, we can draw the triangle for trig ratios. So, for instance, 120 degrees. So, x equals cos 120. This equals negative 1 half. And y equals sine 120. This is root 3 over 2. And we can get that from this angle, 60 degrees. We notice that the x value is negative. We notice the y value is positive. So x and y. And you can do Sokoto on the 60 degrees here. And we're doing trig functions. We should also know the reciprocal trig ratios. 1 over sine theta is r over y. That's cosecant theta. Cosecant. 1 over cos theta is r over x, and that's secant theta. 1 over tan theta equals x over y, and that's cotangent theta. So if we know sine theta, that's 1 half. Reciprocal, 1 over 2, that's 2. Secant theta, 1 over cos theta, cos 30 is root 3 over 2, so this is 2 over root 3. If you wanted to rationalize this, this would be 2 root 3 over 3, but we don't normally do this. This is more complicated to look at than this. And cotangent theta, tangent theta is 1 over root 3, so cotangent is root 3 over 1. And this we do simplify to root 3. Please note that this sine to the power of negative 1 theta is not the reciprocal function. It's inverse sine. The reciprocal is this, cosecant theta. Okay, a common question that we're asked is use Pythagoras or a calculator to compute the six trig ratios for any angle in standard position. So for example, do that for 57 degrees. Sine 57 is 0.839. Cos 57 is 0.545. Tan 57 is 1.54. We don't have these buttons on the calculator, so we just do one over this value, one over this value, one over this value. And you can compute this if you like 
but that's the operation. Another thing we need to know is the reference angle. And it's the smallest positive angle that has one side along the x-axis and the other side on the terminal side. So this is the x-axis. This is the terminal side. This is 120. However, we want the closest angle. That's 60 degrees. So this is the reference angle. So again, we want the closest angle to the x-axis, and this is the angle, 60 degrees. Another problem is determining the exact trig ratios, and we use Pythagoras to do this. Say we have a point, negative 3, negative 5 on the terminal arm using standard positioning. This angle is theta. Determine all six ratios. So we have x, we have y. We need to figure out what r is. r is the square root of negative 3 squared plus negative 5 squared. This is square root 9 plus 25. This is square root 34. Now we just need to substitute negative 5 over root 34. Root 34 over negative 5. However, it's customary to put the negative sign in the numerator. Here we have negative 3 over root 34. And again, we just flip this over. Negative root 34 over 3. And here we have negative 5 over negative 3, and that's just 5 over 3. The two negative signs cancel out. Take this, take the reciprocal, this is 3 over 5. Okay, we need to be able to convert the reference angle back to standard position. So there's a different formula for every quadrant, and this is converting reference angle to standard positioning. This is converting standard positioning to the reference angle. So you don't need a graph, you can just do it with formulas. Looking back to our previous example in quadrant three, theta prime, we always designate our reference angle with a prime notation. It's the absolute value of the inverse sine, negative five over root 34. We could have used any of the trig ratios. This is the absolute value of negative 59 degrees. So theta prime equals 59 degrees. Now that's the reference angle. The standard positioning is in quadrant three. So we look at quadrant three. It's 180 plus theta prime. So that's plus 59. So we have 239 degrees. So we have trig ratios that are positive and negative now. And you need to know whether the trig ratios are positive or negative in each of the quadrants. And the best way to remember this is with all students take calculus. And this lists the positive ratios. So they're all positive, sine, cosine, and tangent in quadrant one. Only sine is positive in quadrant two. Only tangent is positive in quadrant three. And only cosine is positive in quadrant four. And if you want to know the negative ratios, it's just the ones that aren't included. So there's no negative ratios in quadrant one. Cosine and tangent are negative in quadrant two. Sine and cosine are negative in quadrant three. And sine and tangent are negative in quadrant four. 
So if you have a little bit of trouble understanding of what's going on here, you can look at this Desmos graph on my website. So we have zero degrees. We have a unit circle. Zero starts on the positive x-axis. And as we increase, we're going around the circle. Here we're plotting sine. And we're going all the way around the circle. So you can see that we have 520 degrees here. Sine is the y value, that's 0.34. You can see that we have 0.34 here, we've had 0.34 here, we've had 0.34 here, 0.34 here. And the idea is we keep going around and around the circle, we have an infinite number of coterminal sides, and we can keep going to infinity, and this trig function just keeps going to infinity, and it also goes backwards to negative infinity. So we're thinking sine as a function rather than just as a triangle problem. Okay, let's look at one more Desmos graph. This one shows coterminal angles. So here we have 10 degrees. And we add 360, we get 370 degrees. We subtract 360 and we get negative 350 degrees. And if we look at theta, we always have more coterminal angles. This is the x, this is the y. You can also think of this as cosine and sine. And you can see we're adding 360, subtracting 360. If we go the other way around, we're in the negative values for theta, and we still have coterminal angles. And if we look at 0 to 360, this is considered our principal angle. And it's our principal angle because it's easy for us to recognize which quadrant the angle is in. From 0 to 90, it's quadrant 1. From 90 to 180, quadrant 2. From 180 to 270, that's quadrant 3. And 270 to 360 is quadrant 4. If we're given an angle like 676, we have to do some thinking. And that slows us down to figure out that we're in quadrant 4. Similarly, if we're at negative 130 degrees, if we look at negative 130, we hesitate a little bit to try to figure out which quadrant it's in. So it's best to use your reference angles and your principal angles to determine your quadrant. And that completes this lesson.